All right, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. We'll get started. I know it's a beautiful sunny night, but if you, any of you are in the western part of the state or uh, it, we are getting blown away here. I've never, uh, I've never seen so much wind at this time of night before in a long, long time. So thank you for joining us tonight. Lots of updates that we have, I wanna share with you tonight and then provide any opportunities for questions. Lots of, uh, a lot of graduation celebrations are taking place and being planned across the state. We've heard a variety of different scenarios where uh, some are having it outdoors, others are having it inside with invitations to with invitations to the um, with provided to each graduate and they um, everywhere in between as well. So I'm eager to hear what some of your plans might be and how the questions in your communities are managing those decisions. Also wanted to share with you that as we promised when the North Dakota K-12 Smart Restart guidelines came out, that we promised uh, working with the Department of Health, the Governor's Office, Department of Emergency Services, National Guard, and other state agencies, that we would make sure that that guidance and information remained as up-to-date as possible and that it was a dynamic, uh, gr a dynamic growing living, breathing document that would change. Staying true to that commitment, on Monday of this week, we provided an update to Section 3 of the North Dakota K-12 Smart Restart Guidance to Section 3. We replaced the previous scenarios, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and the decision-making tree from CDC because CDC came out with another set of recommendations over the weekend. They, divide, they um, provided an approved new decision tree. So we removed the CDC guidance that was previously in section three and provided uh, the new CDC guidance with the decision tree specifically for schools in the state. And so those that guidance coupled with Governor Burgum's general North Dakota smart restart and the guidance that he had for North Dakota large gatherings that came out of the North Dakota Department of Commerce has, I hope, been helpful to all of you as you've had to make some decisions in your school communities. Another huge update has been the opportunity to provide more of the decision-making authority as we move into different phases of this COVID pandemic to the people that know their situation, their communities best. And that's you as local school board members and your local school community, or excuse me, your local school superintendents along with your community. So the governor amended his executive order just yesterday that provided an additional, we had seven elements of specific issues. One that we had thought had answered most people's questions that would be covered with the student, the summer student center programs, but understanding that some of our school communities had also wanted to partner, partner with public health divisions and public health units to use some of their parking lots and or school buildings for drive-by immunizations in, prep in preparation for kindergarten this fall, as well as some of the COVID testing, as well as some other just very unique situations uh, that school districts would want to partner with their communities on. The governor added an additional eighth element that said any necessary or safe operation deemed uh, a, that would be approved by school superintendents in consultation with their school board. So that was added yesterday. Another student-centered element that was added yesterday was as a result of a concern of some of our special education teachers and directors, as well as parents of students with special needs as they transition from part B of IDEA, Individuals with Disabilities Act, into Part C. Our school buildings were necessary to make sure that we had the proper testing and screening operations for our needs, our students with special needs, as well as our English language learners and some of our CNA programs. So the governor expanded the opportunity to use school, to use school buildings in this way. And the final update that I'd say was important for all of us to, um, talk about this evening is the update that this, the governor um, added on to a higher ed executive order, an element that impacted K-12 students. He essentially declared that a student that received a, the, there was a requirement for CTE courses and or academic requirements for the academic scholarship or the CTE scholarship, given the fact that many of our school districts are using the uh, 
uh, pass fail and a satisfactory or unsatisfactory grading system for this last nine weeks. We didn't want those students to be penalized and miss their opportunity to do the final step of completion for their academic or CTE scholarship. So the governor suspended that element for this semester only, for the spring 2020 semester only. The requirement to have a C or higher grade has been suspended for this semester only. Along that line, I want to just assure everyone we've gotten many calls about this issue. The state, um, including the governor's office and the Department of Public Instruction, have no directive and no requirement to any school, any district, or any teacher stating that they cannot fail a student this semester or this year, that they cannot um, have to give that student the same grade that they had at the going into this pandemic. The local grading system and pass fail of a credit or a class is completely and totally up to the discretion of a local school district and local school board policy. We at the state have never weighed in on a grading system, pass fail or satisfactory, unsatisfactory, nor would we ever give any recommendation about passing students based on any point in time. Again, we respect and honor the local decision making authority that is uh, provided by our state law as they elect school board members and as those school board members hire their superintendent who then hires the building principals. So with that, that is really the end of my updates and hopefully we've been provided, we've given um, you some things to think about and I guess I will just open it up to having either Donna or Patty monitor the chat questions and we'll open up the microphones for any questions. While we wait for some of you to type in your questions, I can talk about the opportunity that summer school has provided. Many of our school districts are preparing to have some of their students uh, come to their schools for a variety of reasons that include childcare as licensed by DHS, Head Start programs for testing of GED, ACT, or work keys or any other of the program eligibility tests summer school for both elementary middle and high school driver's ed is getting well underway and we will have we're working with the north dakota driver's education association to they will be uh, developing some more specific guidance for their members and we will co-op we will collaborate with them and put that on our website but the summer school I just want everyone to know for those of you that are choosing to do that in person, that is fine beginning June 1st. But we also want everyone to know that the governor's executive order is still in place. And for that reason, distance learning can still be utilized and leveraged for instructional time and is an allowable way to deliver instruction for reimbursement from the state on a per pupil basis. So just because the governor has opened up our buildings to in-person face-to-face, that doesn't mean any school has to do any or all of those or a combination of them. If a school district determines with their community that distance learning and or, and or some sort of blended model would work best for your community, please know that that distance learning is still an allowable uh, delivery model for our state because the executive order is still in place. Superintendent Basler, we have no questions at this time, so. Does anyone want to, is there anyone on the line that might have a question? I thought of one more thing that we might be able to talk about that might spur some questions. Um, there, as, as you may know, if you are a board president, you should have received an email from me yesterday. If you are a board president and you didn't receive an email from me yesterday, if you could email pcarmichael at nd.gov, 
with your email address, we'll be certain to add you to our um, e email directory. But essentially, the email yesterday discussed uh, a press release that had uh, been provided yesterday by North Dakota Job Service, jobsnd.com. There has been a number of fraudulent unemployment claims that have been utilizing school employees. In fact, we have one school district in the state where the superintendent himself and his wife, who is an employee of the school district, both had unemployment claims filed to North Dakota Job Service that were fraudulent. And so essentially, I want the email said that a SCAN NDT, NDIT cybersecurity team did a complete investigation and it appears there was no breach of state systems, but what the bad actors, what the criminals did was they went to the ESPB website. ESPB is a different agency than DPI, but they are the agency that does all of our teacher licensing. They went to the ESPB website and was able. they were able to collect all of the public information of names of teachers with, that were licensed in our state, the areas that they were teached in, that they were teaching, that they were teaching in or that they taught in and collected some other publicly available information. They combined that possibly with some social securities that they had bought on the dark web. We don't know what the origin and we don't know where they may have gotten social security numbers, but there was enough information to match up some of these teachers identification with the social security numbers and fraudulent claims were filed. So again, there was no breach of a state system, so we have no way of knowing which social security numbers were leaked because the source of those social security numbers were not from any source in the state of North Dakota uh, as far as a government entity. But we're asking all school business managers, school board members, and superintendents to be vigilant about any uh, North Dakota unemployment claims that are coming into your district to be approved. Um, the job service ND, Brian Clipful, the director of that, has said this has the potential to cost North Dakota a, a tremendous amount of money. And so asking partnership just to be vigilant in that. We are working. Uh, you should be very proud of your association. Alexis Baxley, your executive director, took the lead on initiating an email this afternoon, uh, coordinating the efforts of state agencies that would include the uh, Attorney General's office, the North Dakota Job Service, our office at NDDPI, as well as other educational stakeholder leaders and coordinating some information to get out to not only uh, school board members, but to superintendents, to employees themselves on how they might be able to better protect themselves and how they might be able to respond if they find out that their name indeed was used as filing a fraudulent North Dakota unemployment claim. Superintendent Basler, we have one question um, that came in that says, just to be absolutely clear, are school outdoor facilities such as baseball slash football open to non-school group functions such as peewee softball and adult baseball leagues? School um, facilities, outdoor and indoor, um, the use of those facilities is completely a local control decision. So depending on, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing that the Department of Public Instruction or the governor's office would prohibit, but the, um, the, the decision on whether those school facilities are open to use by community programs or other community partners is completely within the decision of the local school district. We had one more question come in that says, will there be any financial aid to schools that need to update their bathrooms to automatic flushers, soap dispensers, and air dryers to keep things touchless to help the, the spread this fall when school opens again? Yes, there is. Actually, we have processed um, over $30 million was just, is being distributed out to our school districts and it's being distributed on a formula basis. So it's based on the number of students, Title I students that you have in your district. And so there were, um, I think just 16, maybe not even that, 16 school districts that weren't receiving any money from the federal uh, formula. 
uh, based on that formula. So the Department of Public Instruction utilized its dollars to provide some funding to those school districts as well. So every one of our school districts in the state of North Dakota is providing financial, is receiving financial assistance to um, cover the costs that this new pandemic has um, caused. Patty, if you wanna, as I believe your screen is live, if you could go to the COVID-19 update guidance page, as we're looking at it right now. So it's on the banner at the top where Patty is navigating to. So just Patty, Patty, don't type it in, but actually show them the panel. If you can click on the, the orange banner. So clicking on the orange banner, if you scroll, it'll bring you to this page. If you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see ESSER funding with the big dollar sign right there. And you'll see a, a tremendous amount of links at the bot. You'll have frequently asked questions about what this use, what you can use this money for. You also see five bullets that says education funding, a PowerPoint, some user's guide. But if you click on the plus button, okay, hold on, go back up to the top, Patty. Um, click close up that one again. You'll see that you have four plus signs. The top plus sign that says ESSER fund allocations. If you click on that, you will be able to see exactly how much your school district has received in funding to cover the costs of bathroom updates, touchless materials, anything that your school district determines is necessary to open safely to cover things that are necessary because of COVID. You'll see some that were not, um, had no amounts in them. If you wanna go back and open it, yep, yep, right there. Um, those are the school districts that will receive, like Beach Home on the Range is a non-public school and their portion is a, a portion of, I believe, the Beach School District. Baker number 10 is one that we are making whole. So if you are a school district school board member, Billings is one that we are making whole. They didn't receive any in their the title, the uh, formula funding, but DPI will be providing additional um, resources from their funding to help Billings County. Understanding that regardless if you received funding through this formula, you had an impact by COVID. So if you are a school district that doesn't see your name on this source, please contact Lori Matsky at the department and she will be able to help you. So this is a, an extremely valuable page for school districts and school board members as they determine funding. So again, you just follow the little banner on the top of the page. It will take you to um, the updates and guidance where you can scroll down and you will, if you click on the dollar sign, So again, just to go through the path one more time, you click on the orange banner at the top, it will bring you to this page, and you have a multitude of resources and answers to some questions that are hopefully valuable to you and your constituents. Any other questions? We have no other questions at this time. Okay, so for those of you that are not watching on the screen with us tonight, just Google NDDPI. And on the very first page of our homepage, you're gonna see an orange banner at the top that says COVID-19 updates and guidance. Click on that page and it will take you to a main page of a ton of resources and FAQs. The one that would likely be most interested to you now is the graduation guidance reopening guidance and of course if you scroll down just a tish just a little bit like one or two swipes you'll see a big dollar sign and that will have all the answers to your questions about funding that your school district can use to help um, 
mitigate the costs that you're incurring because of COVID-19. And we just had one more question come in and it says if the school follows guidelines and opens for summer school or driver's ed and our community has a virus out outbreak, does the district or the board have the liability if it is determined to have a spread in our building? So I don't know particularly the liability issues. Those are things that I believe would be um, best uh, address or best asked of the North Dakota Insurance Reserve Fund and or your local um, school district attorney. Um, some some people that may have some answers to that question is your local public health unit. I, I believe you know there's a lot of things about was it ill intended? Was there was there ne negligence? All of those things come into play, but those would be questions that were would be you know better answered by someone with a law degree versus a, an educational leadership degree. But um, I believe working with your public health unit as well as your the legal counsel with your school district, you can mitigate as much of your um, liability, I believe, as possible. So Kirsten, um, there we missed one question, but it states, would you provide a link for the updated allowed elements for school facility use? Sure can. Absolutely, I'll do it. I'll get you a link to the uh, governor's executive order right now. Great idea. Great idea. Come back here. So I'm in meeting chat. Is that where I'm supposed to be posting these things? Or is it in the questions? I bet it's in the questions. There it is. It, yep, I in the Q&A box. Okay, got it. There we go. Any other questions this evening? I know many of you are hosting your graduation ceremonies this weekend. This is the last week for over 60% of our schools. We had about um, we actually had about 5% of our students that finished last week. We've got 65 or 60% of our students finishing this week and about 35% of our students have one more week to go. So I wish you all a very, very happy celebration. I know many of you have um, planned for outdoor celebrations. I wanna thank you for that and for making that work for your students i am you know i'm really torn as a as a daughter of a, a as a daughter of a family that you know farmed and ranched for many years you don't want to wish off rain in this time of year but i hope that it can stay away during these outdoor ceremonies that we all have planned and so everybody can be the, the students have have been so so resilient and persevered through so much so i hope that they can have at least a dry graduation ceremony if it's going to be outside. I want to thank you for your leadership during all of this. And I want you to know that I, you can continue to call our office, continue to email our office. We will try to get those answers to you as quickly as we possibly can. I also want to remind everyone of the May 30th virtual celebration that we have a uh, plan that the governor will be speaking at. Carson Wentz will be our commencement speaker. We also have congratulatory messages from Josh Jamel and Tiger Lily. And Tiger Lily will also be providing a musical, uh, a musical selection for us. And so I have been uh, able to watch some of the addresses and see some of the content. I will share with all of you that this is a great these are great messages that our young people i think deserve to hear and will enjoy hearing so i will encourage all of you just to, to um join us 
May 30th, Saturday, May 30th, 1 p.m. Central, excuse me, 1 p.m. Mountain and 2 p.m. Central. It will be live streamed on Dickinson Press, Jamestown Sun, Grand Forks Herald, Fargo Forum. I would also encourage you to uh, tune in to your uh, w the abc stations during that time and you will be able to see it live so i am actually going to post in the q a another link to that virtual graduation celebration the celebrating the class north the class of 2020 the governor will be providing some rocks as well and as always just a very inspirational um, speaker himself We've confirmed our student speakers as well. So we have the student speaker of Courtney Bits will give the student address. And we have a student from Beulah, a student from Devil's Lake, a student from Bismarck Legacy, and a student from Wapaton that will be doing some introductions. So we're very optimistic and hopeful that this will be an ex another additional way to create memories for this class that has truly been leading the way and has already made their mark on the world by being the first senior class to graduate during a pandemic in North Dakota. So thank you all again. Have a wonderful evening and stay in touch. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. One more question that I see. Where would we find information about guidelines for what's allowable for summer sports in schools, etc.? So summer sports can be found at the North Dakota High School Activities Association website, NDHA, NDHSAA, I'll post that in there right now. And the Board of Directors did actually just meet today and made some decisions about their summer school programs. And so um, you can find some information there and I'll put that website in here. Uh, the and what phase are we in phase one or phase two as a state level the governor um, has determined we are in phase one and we are slowly working our way into phase two but we are not in phase two yet we're in phase one i would encourage everyone to take a look at this website in addition to the north dakota k-12 Smart Restart, there is North Dakota Smart Restart that are guidelines that have been developed by the governor's office and the North Dakota, Depart North Dakota Department of Commerce. And I will get you that linked website right here. And that provides a broader overview of what the governor's plan is outside of K-12 education. So as soon as I get my mouse to work. So lots of links I'm popping in there tonight, but hopefully they're helpful. All right, I think we've answered all the questions. All right, thank you so much. And if we missed any questions or you have any follow-up that you'd just like to speak one-on-one -on -one about with us about, please call our office. Please utilize your association they that's what they're they they that's why they work there and that's why they're committed to helping you um alexis do you have anything to share she may, oh perfect patty thank you for adding the phone number 328-3264 328-3264 thank you patty with that, we will sign off for the night and you have a wonderful, wonderful evening.